It's been a minute since we've uh, spoke the words Call of Duty on this channel, and it's had a pretty rough go of it the last few years. Frankly, it's of its own making. I'll always say that the people working on Call of Duty are insanely talented, but the quick turnarounds are expected to work with and the constant release schedule means it's almost impossible for a creative vision to truly come to fruition like it could back in the glory days of, let's say, the PS3 and the 360 COD games. Modern Warfare 3 was admittedly a step in the right direction, but it had a long list of issues that kept people from diving back in. $70 price tag, despite it being an asset flip of Modern Warfare 2, as well as Activision's refusal to adjust or remove the controversial skill-based matchmaking system that was implemented back in 2019. And Warzone. Frankly, uh, the less said about the state of the game, the better. But things are going to keep chugging along for the Call of Duty train, and we recently got a ton of leaks that actually give us a better look at what 2024 will look like. And today, uh, yep, we're going back to COD, guys. We're going over all of it. Let me know in the comments if you think anything can save Call of Duty at this point. Drop a like on this video. And if you've been enjoying the more varied gaming news recently, uh, you let me know in the comments. Now, according to a number of very trusted insider sources, the same sources that have correctly leaked basically every Call of Duty game year after year, the 2024 COD game is going to be called Call of Duty Black Ops Gulf War. It will be developed primarily by Treyarch. It'll have Raven Software offering supporting hands and also seemingly doing the campaign. For those that didn't know, this is basically the same setup that Black Ops Cold War had, but with much more development time. The 2020 Call of Duty game was originally going to be a brand new subseries developed by Sledgehammer with Raven supporting, but roughly a year before the game was supposed to be finished, it was a hot mess. Activision stepped in. They kicked Sledgehammer off the project, handed it off to Treyarch allegedly to basically just slap something together out of the work that had been done while also tying it into the Black Ops canon and also asking or tasking Raven Software with providing support wherever it was needed and also doing the heavy lifting on the single player campaign. Sounds familiar, right? The end result was Black Ops Cold War, which had its fair share of issues, but it was honestly not a bad game by the time it was all said and done, and many COD players consider Cold War to be the best of the post-Modern Warfare 2019 Call of Duty titles. Now, before we move on, guys, if you get anything from G2A.com, use code CHAOS. Get yourself some cash back. The link is at the top of the description. Now, apparently Activision was a fan of how Treyarch and Raven worked together on that game because COD 2024 is going to feature an identical splitting of the work. Treyarch will make all the design decisions, write the story, develop the multiplayer and the zombies modes, while Raven will develop the campaign and offer support where it's needed. Now, given the fact that Treyarch and Raven made Black Ops Cold War in roughly a year, the fact that they've seemingly had more than triple that amount of time for COD 2024, I'm actually thinking there's hope. It's reassuring. According to the reports, Black Ops Gulf War is going to be more or less a direct sequel to Black Ops Cold War, which makes sense historically. The Black Ops Cold War campaign ends in the late 1980s, and the Gulf War kicked off in the year 1990, so it wouldn't be hard to get a lot of the same characters to come back and continue their stories, basically right where they left off. As for the story, insider reports claim the plot will revolve around the CIA examining the United States' role in the conflict, and the game is almost certainly going to feature a recreation of the Battle of Mogadishu, better known as the Black Hawk Down Incident. The game will also reportedly lean back into more traditional military combat technology and familiar Black Ops gadgetry as opposed to the current near-future tech we've seen from Modern Warfare and some of the other recent Call of Duty titles. So, super high-tech weaponry, gun attachments, out. Instead, the guns and gear will be more in line with what it was in Black Ops Cold War, perhaps the original Modern Warfare game from 2007 as well. Now, Insider Gaming published a report not too long ago suggesting that Raven Software is experimenting with a true open-world setup for the game's single-player campaign, which that would be a first for the franchise. Modern Warfare 3 had some open levels, but they were widely hated by the community due to how barren the environments were. However, this new campaign will seemingly be a full-fledged open world similar to Far Cry games. It will involve vehicles, fast traveling, location to location. There will even allegedly be a number of fan-favorite Black Ops characters coming back with... Adler reporting playing a big role in the story. Now, a couple of multiplayer maps for the new game have already seemingly leaked over concept art, and it showed up in the game files of Warzone Mobile, of all places. The first map is called Stealth, seems to be based in a U.S. military base in the desert, and there is an F-117 Nighthawk bomber in the hangar, which is basically confirming that the game is going to be set in the 90s. The other map is called Pillage, seems to be set in a war-torn uh, mansion or palace, but also remember... This is concept art, so it's entirely possible these maps are heavily altered or renamed by the time we see them. But also remember, remember that it's been 100% confirmed that this game is being built on a modified version of the Infinity Ward's engine. Unlike Black Ops Cold War, which is built on a modified version of the Black Ops 4 engine. 
Call of Duty's general manager confirmed a while back that while every game is going to be built on IW's engine, they want the studios to make modifications to it so uh, that way Treyarch and Infinity Ward games feel distinct from one another. Similar how it was back in the Xbox 360 days, which I'm okay with. Every game was built on the Quake 3 engine, but IW and Treyarch were constantly making their own adjustments so their games would feel unique from one another, despite being technically built on the same architecture. And I want to jump back really quick to that pillage, that war-torn mansion, palace. Could be like Saddam Hussein's palace, just saying. Now, there's also been some reports by Windows Central recently discussing the possibility of Treyarch's classic round-based zombies mode coming back in 2024. Modern Warfare 3 Zombies mode received kind of mixed reviews, with some people absolutely loving it, others thinking it was pretty boring, but the community has been asking for a traditional round-based zombies for years, and it seems like they're going to get it. The last COD game to have actual round-based zombies was Black Ops Cold War, so it does make sense for Black Ops Gulf War to bring it back. Now let's talk about the release date. And we actually have Phil Spencer to thank for this information, because not too long ago, he reportedly told Xbox employees that it was safe to assume a new Call of Duty game would be launching in October of 24, 2024. Given the fact that Microsoft now owns Activision, all of its IPs, Phil would absolutely know when the next Call of Duty is coming out, even if he's not personally involved with the development. Most Call of Duty games have launched in either October or November, so there wasn't much of a shock, but since we're on the topic of Phil Spencer and Xbox, there's actually a new element at play with this game. That's the Xbox Game Pass. Modern Warfare 3 was the first Call of Duty game to be released under Xbox ownership, but Microsoft, they had zero involvement in the development or the decision making. I mean, Microsoft only took control of Activision a few weeks before Modern Warfare 3 launched, so obviously, there wasn't really anything they could have done about it. But, Activision has been 100% owned by Microsoft since October 13th of last year, meaning Microsoft will actually have a bit more say over how Black Ops Gulf War is distributed, even if they don't have much control over the development. Now, since this game has been in development for a few years, I doubt Microsoft or Xbox had any creative liberties or input in there, but they will have control over the publishing process this time around, which means there are rumors circulating that COD 2024 will launch on the Xbox Game Pass. Now, during a recent episode of the official Xbox podcast, Phil reiterated that all first-party Xbox Studio games are going to be playable on the Game Pass from day one, which would mean COD will be available on the subscription service right out of the gate when it launches. This could be huge. Could be a big boost for Xbox because, yes, this might lead to less people dropping $70 on launch day for Call of Duty, but it will also lead to a bunch of additional people paying money every single month to keep playing it. Call of Duty is a game that people sink hundreds and hundreds of hours into, if it's a good COD, that is. And if Game Pass is an option... A lot of people will opt to pay the subscription every month for the additional benefits instead of just buying a copy and calling it a day. Now, it hasn't been confirmed if COD is actually going to be on the Game Pass this year, but it also might be as simple as I'm making it sound. Xbox recently confirmed Diablo 4 will be on the Game Pass in March. And you'll remember, that game launched in the middle of 2023, a few months before Microsoft took control of Activ Activision Blizzard. Now, Diablo 4 didn't launch on Game Pass because Microsoft didn't own the IP, but they do now. And they're kind of dragging their heels when it comes to adding it to the service, but there's another weird wrench in the plans, and that's the fact that apparently Diablo 4 is not going to be available to Game, Cast or Game Pass core subscribers, which, that's kind of odd. Now, in case you didn't know, Game Pass actually has a few different tiers, those being the Game Pass Core, Game Pass PC, and Game Pass Ultimate. According to Microsoft themselves, Diablo 4 will not be available on Core, which could be their plan for COD as well. The difference between Core and Ultimate is a much wider selection of games for an additional $7 a month, as well as the fact that Game Pass Ultimate works on both console and PC, while Core only works on console. So if Microsoft puts Call of Duty on Game Pass Ultimate like they are with Diablo 4, that could be a pretty big revenue generator, especially since they will always be, they'll always be making money off every $70 sale of the game across all platforms. Now, Regardless of how you feel about all of the news of COD 2024, we do need to consider a few things before we predict whether or not this game is actually going to do what it needs to be, but just to bring COD back. First of all, the industry has been largely shifting away from full price live service games. Call of Duty has been pretty behind on those. So far, the two biggest games of the year, Power World and Helldivers 2. Two games that did not launch for full price or were absolutely loaded with content on launch day. People are also just burnt out on the new Call of Duty formula right now, and if COD 2024 is going to be another reskin of Modern Warfare 2019, people are not going to buy it. COD is struggling to bring in new players in the modern gaming world, and that's something that's not going to be fixed if you do not shake up the formula. Doing the same thing every year with a new paint job doesn't cut it anymore, especially when you're charging $70. Now, 
I think COD 2024 has some decent ideas on the table, but decent ideas are not going to be enough in the current gaming economy. You have to deliver something awesome to restore fan trust in the brand. You have to pull them away from the dozens of other games that have taken COD's place. Call of Duty just doesn't, they just, they, ha, they have to release a fantastic game. They do. They need to release a game that brings in just as many new players as, as well as the old ones, which is something I'm just not convinced that they can do. I mean, not without abandoning the template they've been using since Modern Warfare 2019. Ditch the hard skill-based matchmaking. Ditch the engagement-based camo system. Ditch the seasonal level ca- or, or level caps. Give us back pick 10. Give us back camo challenges. I mean, that took skill instead of just telling us to go get a million kills while crouched. Stop acting like Call of Duty needs to be for everybody. Games designed for everyone don't work anymore. You need to have a specific vision for the game to bring it to life. A game for everyone is actually a game for no one. Let me know what you guys think. I'll keep you updated if anything new breaks, and I'll see you soon.